Hi, this is Brian Ierson from the Computer Workshop again. Today we're going to look at Word and how we can use Word to view or lay out books. Now to start with I have a single page view here of a document and this whole document was created the way we normally would type a document in Word. We get to the bottom of a page and it continues to the next page. This is what's considered to be a vertical page movement. Now you'll notice that I am currently on the View tab in my ribbon and I am actually using a vertical page movement setup. If I would like to switch this to a view side to side, this is how I'm going to move through my pages. I want you to notice that before I do this that I am able to zoom in and zoom out of my document with all full control. But as soon as I move to the view side by side, or page movement side by side I should say, I no longer have the ability to zoom in and zoom out. I do have a new thumbnails button though which will allow us to go ahead and zoom out to see multiple pages so we can scroll through the larger document view. If I want to look at one specific page I simply click on it and I will exit the thumbnail view back down to the normal view. Another way that I could enter or exit the thumbnail view is to literally click on it once to turn it on and click on it again to turn it off. I do want to draw your attention to the fact here that when you are viewing thumbnails all of your other controls are pretty much disabled. So we're going to come out of that and you will see that those controls have pretty much been enabled. Except for viewing of course since we are now viewing our document with the page side to side movement. Alrighty, so now we've got that we're going to come back here and look at page one and this is kind of one of those strange little things that you have to remember. While this may look like you are viewing this as a spread, you are still viewing this page by page by page. And the very first page will always be the cover. And you will always open a cover and it will be bound on the left side, right? We open a book or something, we open it from the right over to the left. So the binding for this front cover is actually over here on the left. The next page would have its binding on the right. So it's a bit of a strange thing to think of. But I'm going to make a few changes here to make this more readily visible. And the first thing I want to do is think about adding a chapter cover. So let's say that this is a book. I want to add a chapter cover. So instead of trying to rebuild a chapter cover each time, if you think back, one of the earlier videos that I had made was a tutorial on how to create your own cover pages. Now, I've gone ahead here and I've created a cover page that is not for the entire document, but I've made a smaller subsectional one here called a chapter cover. So I can now have a chapter cover for each document in a larger book. The cover pages, if you start getting creative in how you think about using them, offer a lot of really useful um, ways to speed up a workflow. So now I can go ahead and I can edit this and just change that to chapter one. I can click it here next to my topics, enter in my topics, and then if I wanted to, I could highlight those topics and wrap them inside of a bulleted list. So just a very quick, there's my chapter cover. Now before I go any further here, I want to note that I am currently working on this image and if I am on the image and I come up here to my layout tab in the ribbon and I go to my margins, you will see that you are not able to create any customized margins. Well, that's because you are still actively working on a selected object. So if you click off of that, deselect that, 
and then come back up to margins, you will see that you can, in fact, now go back in and customize your margins. And that's where we're going next. So first things first, we're going to take a look at here the margins. You've got your portrait and landscape, and you've got this multi-pages. And this is the way that I want to address the book issue. So I'm going to change this from being a normal layout to a book fold. Now as a book fold, I will also be able to determine how many sheets are going to be in each booklet. And if I'm going to be doing this as a book fold, you got to think about one sheet of paper having two sheets, four sheets, four pages per sheet, right? Because you're going to fold that in half and staple it. So in this case, I always want to keep this as a divisible by four number when I'm creating a book, but I'm going to just switch this from eight to all. Now you'll notice that the inside and outside have replaced both left and right. So I'm now going to go ahead and make a few adjustments to my margins. I'm going to say that I want the inside to be a little bit tighter. I'm going to make that come down to a half an inch because I'm not making a very thick book that will be you know, glued together. Uh, this is going to be something that's either stapled or spiral bound. So I can afford to lay this flat because of that type of binding so I can narrow my inside margin. But I'm going to leave the outside margin a little extra wide so that people who are going through my manual or my book have a space where they can write notes next to the text. Or I can add text boxes to put in notes of my own. So I'm just going to adjust those things. You can see the little preview down below adjusts and shows you a reflection of what this is going to look like. When you're happy, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And you're going to see that this really didn't work very well right now. Well, if I'm looking at my ruler, you can see that this is actually kind of treating this as a, ha as a half page but it's a half page of an eight and a half by 11. So I need to come back over to my page setup. I'm gonna to go to the size tab and I'm gonna change this from being letter to tabloid, 11 by 17. And now you can see you've got a nice spread looking layout. But remember, this is Word and it is not going to show this to you as a spread. It will always show you the first page and it will always show that to you next to the second page. But again, if this was a book, it would be bound along this edge, not this edge. But the inside page would be on this edge. Now, as I continue to go through, this is actually going to show me a much more honest portrayal of the book layout. But this is the way that we can very quickly and easily scroll through and read the book or lay it out to make sure that everything prints the way that we want with the adjustment of our margins to allow us a lot more freedom of control. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. I would also like to take just a few moments to say if you enjoyed this tutorial today, I ask you to please go ahead and subscribe and see what's coming up next week. We do try and put out new videos every week, so you never know what you'll find when you come back. So until next time, take care.